welcome back to what I think is going to be the penultimate episode on Maypole Farm. So, um, while I had a fairly quiet spot in the game, I knocked out a few signage bailing contracts for DS Agri, um, partly because I needed to raise some cash to buy a TMR mixer. Now we are into kind of late autumn slash winter. We've got all the cows in, um, got no grass to zero graze. So going to be making TMR going forwards. But um, Cavalier Roy, since between me recording the last few videos, which I recorded quite a while ago and recording this video, Cavalier Roy has released Glen Lathan, Glen Leathan, Glen something on King Odds. Um, and that means that I can move this series across entirely, including the multiplayer bit. So come back to that. I'm just checking the sales. And then um, you may remember last winter, I leased a TMR mixer. Um, we're going to buy that now. So I transferred the money, some of the money that I earned doing the DS Agri signage contracts across. And we're going to get the Puma 17 HD. Um, so it's a 17,000 litre TMR mixer, it's quite a nice basic one. I really liked it last time, so you know, get that and buy it um, so we can have it on the farm for good. So I'm gonna make some TMR next, which is quite a slow process. Um, and I'll, I'll mention as I go through what I'm putting in, but yeah, so the, the plan is we're gonna finish up the beet harvest today. Um, and that's the last of our crops harvested. Um, obviously, I've put some time and effort into planting next year's crops and some of next year's crops and that kind of thing. You know, that, it, 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 it is what it is. Um, the next farmer will inherit, will benefit from that, I guess. Um, I had spoken about doing some kind of weird hybrid, but that was mostly because I couldn't move the multiplayer bit. So I can do that now. So the plan is to um, we harvest the beets in this video. Um, next video, I am going to collapse the save down to one farm. So at the moment it's two, I have the multiplayer split out. Um, I'm going to sell the, the DS Agri yard. So I have to bring the crops that are in the silo over to here. Because um, there are some crops in those silos from the excess on the contracts. Um, we'll bring all the kit over here somehow no we won't bother doing that the kit's going to the glen place um so that will all get shipped across to glen lethan glen lava i am going to leave here so the cows are staying here um through the winter because all the winter feed is here um so i'm going to leave the tmr mixer the deutz that's on the tmr mixer the zetor and probably the fiat 180 um so those three tractors, the TMR mix are all the stuff, basically all the stuff that's needed to look after the cows. Um, probably a trailer and I might lease the tank so we can keep the slurry and the manure under control. Um, I'm then going to move everything. So, sold the DS Agri yard, all their kit shipped over to Scotland. I'm going to sell the fields so we just have the yard then going to move across to the glen map get the loan sorted so we can buy everything um, and one of the benefits of collapsing everything down is that most of the capital that we have between the two farms is a mixture of the cash and the vehicles that we own so those are going to be, plus the land as we buy it, will be used as the collateral to get the loan so that we can buy the more expensive farm over on Glen Larvan. Um, so in the TMR, I am putting about 1500 litres of grain mix and brewer's grain, so that's what's on the floor, and then about just under 3000 litres of root crops. Um, I originally did a bale of hay. I ended up reducing that to half a bale of hay and then the rest may silage. So, um, yeah, we'll then move across. Um, 
probably we'll have to skip through winter because winter's going to be pretty grim and we can't actually do any field work i don't think there might be some prep but probably we'll skip through winter um reappear in like february i think um at the same time i'll go through winter on here feed all the animals um we'll use up whatever um food we use up what i'm thinking is that we'll keep the animals here until the point where we've got feed sorted for them so either so because with the way that farm set up we've got the pasture so we can graze the cows so either until the grass is grown enough that we can graze them and probably we've got our first cut off of whatever grass fields we've got we might be able i don't know we might be able to squeeze planting grass in in november over there um so that we can get a cut fairly early even if it's a shortcut um so I won't move the cows until we've got feed sorted. When we've got plenty of feed here, we can afford to keep this yard. Um, obviously, we'll be getting milk still, so we'll sell the milk on while we're here. Um, and yeah, so any money that we, any excess money that we make from selling milk here, we can move across to the bank account for Glen Leathen, Glen Marvin. Um, so that's the plan. Um, or the patrons that means the multiplayer will move as well um and probably i'll bring that up at about the february point as well um which might be quite soon so i'm gonna try and get that save set up soon um the slight problem is i have another save i need to set up for the patron series so, um, but that that's the plan um that's largely been made possible by cavalier releasing the map on king mods if you're kind of curious as to why he's done that and he's not waited um obviously the the wait period with giants and then to get testing done is quite long it's probably you know the order of three weeks or so um and what this allows you know and if you find issues with the map make sure you feed them back to cavalier use the comment section on the king mods page um you'll feel free to stick them on my discord and tag me i guess and i can make sure the cavalier sees them um he watches some which is my maypole videos i believe he'll be watching the glen Leatham ones i'm sure so stick comments below that if you want to um think of it basically as public map testing so um i guess the theory but i think he did it for maypole and one of his other maps as well and i think the theory is that you guys can spot issues that you might spot when you download it off of mod hub before it's on mod hub so they can be fixed before it's released um so yeah that's why he's done it when it releases on mod hub definitely go download it from there again definitely go rate it um if you enjoy it if you don't enjoy the map just don't bother you know um it makes a big difference to modders having that rating above four stars so um yeah do that and yeah so this is the last real proper video on here the next one will probably be a hybrid of doing some of the selling off and maybe appearing in glenleith and getting all the kit in place and all that kind of thing and we'll work out planting and that kind of stuff i sort of rambled about that in the video i did setting the farm up so this is the first video that i've actually recorded since i recorded that video um i swapped the release order when cav changed it so that the map was available um so i've got the the root crop harvester from ds agri um got my 7810 on my trailer i end up bringing over one of the other 7810s and one of the red rock trailers because the, i'm selling these off the field so these are going to the forage dealer because it's quite a good price and we, there's no point storing them um and it's quite a drive so i ended up waiting for the tractor to get back so i put two on the job um yeah so i in in the in the video where i built the farm essentially i rambled about what i might do for field planting but um obviously now it's a bit more serious we've got to work out um when we're going to be planting stuff because the the geo and the weather on there is quite
quite a little bit more difficult um, and weather doesn't affect FS so much but you know um, it's going to be a little bit more challenging it's probably limited what we can plant in spring so um, yeah we'll work out what we're going to plant um, if I can or tuck some grass in if we can get cover crops in for grass maybe before we plant maize or whatever if we plant maize maybe we'll do all grass um, or whole crop who knows um, I might do some whole crop next year actually um, it might be interesting and yeah that, that, that's kind of it and we'll just go from there and so the intent with this this I've, you may have noticed as well this is the first video I've done since I've rebranded this as farming through the decades there's the reason for that is this series is was never going to stay on one map so I always knew when I started playing on Maypole that I would move maps um, because this, this series is going to run for at least 10 in-game years um, so we're in in-game year three I think at the moment um, so the plan was always to move about and I never really named it with that in mind and uh, you know this series has been running for about a year now but kind of maybe pulling a bit from FSG's generations series you know whereas I he, he's kind of playing through generations of equipment I am definitely playing through the decades of farming equipment so I thought it worked um and so when it became clear to me that I was going to be moving maps soon, I slightly rebranded the series um, so that there's some consistency there for people if they're just picking up, you know, if they're just picking up um, with the new map move, because that happens, you know, you, I can see it with Saxthorpe, you know, the first couple of videos have got loads of views, that always tails off. Um, but for those that do find the channel and stick around you know it's like well maybe you want to understand how we've ended up with a farm that's got you know like eight tractors and two combines and all this stuff um when i'm saying i'm pl saying i'm playing on hard mode so i think that's going to be kind of cool that you know they can see oh it's part of that series and it's part of this really long playlist and they can go back and watch the previous uh, like 60 odd episodes i think it is so yeah when 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 I start on the new map, I will do a bit of scene setting again and just kind of re re baseline because some of the rules are going to change slightly um, about how I'm doing things. I've spoken about them in the Maple video, so if you've been watching, they won't be a surprise at all. But yeah, um, I'm just checking the beat prices, and actually, the forage dealer has a really good price at the moment. So I'm just going to sell straight out of the field, like I said. Um, there's no point trying to store them we won't use i think we've got more than enough um potatoes and beets left from last year's harvest to feed the animals through the winter um, and once spring hits we'll be turning them out into the pasture in the new farm and we'll be supplementary feeding either hay or silage um so yeah that's that's kind of the plan um Hoping you guys will enjoy the the change of scene. Um, obviously not a complete change because it's a continuation. You will have seen where I built the new farm. We have got um, the same cow sheds plus one of mine. I am going to be adding in enhanced animal system when, when I move. And that brings the um, calves and stuff, which is going to be cool. So I think all the calves that we've got at the moment bar the ones that are going to be born over the winter are probably at a stage where they would be on solid food so we'll be feeding them tmr but i'll probably have all of the younger animals in the improvised shed because it suits more animals better um, and i may mess around with the capacity because we've got smaller animals because of that to, to to get those in um but yeah that that's the plan of the, the milkers will be in the sheds and then come springtime we'll turn them all out into the field that probably means that the field won't be able to graze all of the cows completely and we'll be having to do supplement feeding and we'll do that with probably a bit of TMR, which is why I've brought the mixer, and probably, you know, some other stuff as well. That was quite a lot of rambling about the future. So, in terms of this video, as I say, you know, get the beet harvest done. I still love this beet harvester. I, you know, 
The purists, I guess, will say that it's not very region appropriate and stuff, but the um, the pull behinds are so painful to use, you know. The, the harvest width is so small, there's no way we can afford a half million pound uh, Grimmy or um, the other brand that I've forgotten. So this is what we've got, you know. In the future, maybe when we, we, you know, we've moved on another couple of decades, we might have a big Grimmy potato harvester, you know. We might be in a completely different part of the world or the country at that point um so i don't know where this series will end up that's the cool thing uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm really really pleased that i've got a, 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 a nice easy way of making the move now it's going to be really good fun i think to start on a fresh map um the weather is going to be challenging to get some stuff done particularly harvest as we get into autumn and everything that we're going to plant is going to be a spring crop, so yeah, that could be could be tricky. Um, probably, I, I suspect there's a good chance we're going to have to rely on harvesting contracts to get the straw that I need to keep the cows bedded down over winter. So you'll be using less by putting them out in the pasture, but I, I'm, I'm I'm probably going to be relying on that. And uh, yeah, so. The thing, so the way the way I did this beet harvest, you can see, is I, I kind of cut the field up into a few blocks, and rather than so this 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 harvester doesn't work particularly well with auto drive using combine unload. So what I did is I had two tractors running, and they were on I think pick up and deliver, um, and they were set to pick up from the field and deliver to the forage dealer, and basically every loop. I would tip more in and when they hit like 85% full they'd go unload and usually the next tractor would be ready or on its way to be filled up. The My one with the smaller trailer on it was not quite enough for the, the second tractor to get back. Um, they could really have done with the two Red Rock trailers to do this job. Um, but you know in in all it worked really well i think it worked better than on the i did a couple of harvesting contracts where i tried to use the combine unload and it really didn't work well so um whereas this did uh and i guess the key is that you need to be able to do an up down before the harvest is full which generally you can so the headlands i manually did the unloading um but on the up down rows i just used this approach and it worked really well it's Quite often what I do if I'm combining on my own, I'll park a trailer at one end or both ends of the field and just unload on the sweep fast. Um, it's, it, it's a good option if you're single player and you're doing something like this. Um, and auto drive worked really well. Shout out to Cartech for setting up the auto drive course up at Forage Dealer. Um, the one that I had created was not good, but the one that he edited and, ad and adjusted actually works really well. So it worked pretty smoothly. Um, yeah. I'm gonna do a shout out to the patrons and the YouTube channel members at this point. Appreciate you guys supporting the channel. It's uh, it's still really cool. So one thing that you know people think eventually i'm going to be more comfortable with this this is still for me a quite weird experience that um, people look forward to my videos so much that they want to support me and yeah it's still weird i know you're going to say just get used to it i am slowly but so. having tried you i'm sure i've spoken about before having tried to do youtube this, this is really my third attempt at trying to make the same youtube channel i've had the same youtube channel since i think 2015 or something like that maybe earlier um but trying to find a find my niche which is always the key with with youtube um and i have with this and it's been awesome so um 
and you know it's really nice that I've been able to stick to and I think I spoke about it I spoke about it on Saxlaw I still make videos that I would watch if they weren't made by me um, I don't generally watch my own videos back I watch them as I edit them but that's it um, the one caveat on that is I do sometimes go back and watch some of my own tutorials because you know if you don't do things for a long time you get skill fade so I will go back and watch uh, usually auto drive um, yeah so it, it's still still really cool um, I have another project that I'm working on which is linked to this but um, the videos are not going to be on this YouTube channel because they are different enough that I don't think most of you will be interested um, when I when it, when I when I've actually started it, I'll be sharing the videos on like my channel page, community page, or whatever, and I'll probably share them on Discord. But um, I don't think they will appeal to the core audience. If if you do watch them, that's awesome. Um, but there goes Auto Drive. Um, I want to make some videos, and I've, I have spoken about doing them on this channel, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna separate it out. Um, I want to make videos about being a small YouTuber um, a bunch or I'm sure a bunch of you that have small YouTube channels watch you know like vidIQ and some of the others and so many promise you you know I can do this and your channel will instantly have 4 million subscribers and all that kind of stuff and for most people none of that stuff works you know in my experience I'm running some experiments in the background, which I will share when they're done. Um, I'm, I've written a script for the first video. I haven't recorded it yet. And I just, I, I want to do video. So, I, and it's partly, it's reminded me, it's nudged me a bit. Um, Bumps and Bob was saying about when I was speaking in the Saxel video about how I make these videos. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. I could do that. And... He's like me, he, or like I started, makes time-lapse videos, but doesn't enjoy necessarily watching time-lapse videos that are just music. So I, you know, clearly I don't have a huge YouTube channel. I have quite a small audience. It's a really consistent audience, which I really appreciate. I'd rather have, I, I like the small community that I have, but I, I just want to talk again. You know, set a bit of realism into some of these videos and talk about how I make videos um, some of the things that I, I on and off I've been messing around on YouTube for eight years very on and off but you know I'm coming up on three years of making farm sim videos um, and while my channel hasn't grown as much as some others I've watched other channels grow and I've seen how they do it and if you're comfortable with making the kinds of content that they make and you enjoy it then that would work for you and I can talk about that kind of stuff um, it's just that I don't enjoy making it so I won't make it you know it, it's it's that kind of thing so it, it it's a way off yet um, particularly with it being so hot at the moment I'm finding, you know, I've just this afternoon spent, you know, an hour recording with Cartech. We probably spent the best part of two hours gassing away to each other. Um, and that meant I had to have the windows shut, the fans off. And so, you know, it went from being some really big lag spikes. Um, so I was playing this, this, this was being recorded on the server. Um, it went from being like 24 degrees in here to 28 degrees and so i'm finding generally by this kind of time so it's about half three now that i need to switch everything off in the spare room um stop working and go get some cooler air so it's actually nicer outside today than it is inside um and so i'm focusing my recording effort on farm sim because that's what started all this and what I still enjoy I, I love playing farm sim still I really enjoy making these videos and so I don't want to the this this side project is going to be something that I do when I have spare capacity it's like um, the shorts that I've been doing 
um, m mostly when I'm making those, it's you, know, you guys know the dogs wake me up stupidly early. Um, there have been a few bad so this this week. Um, I um, I'll come on to talking about migraines properly in a bit because I know you guys are interested in that as well. But I've had a couple of days this week where I've woken up. In fact, the last two days where I've woken up with really bad headaches. Either they're not quite my so I, I have different types of headaches. If you're not a headache sufferer, this won't make sense to you. Um, some are migraine headaches, some are not. I woke up with you know not quite a full blown migraine, but it was pretty pretty nasty. It woke me up at half three this morning. Um, so I've been awake since half three, which sucks because it's Thursday and that means I'm probably going to be going quite late if we stream. I'm not sure if we are yet. Waiting to hear back from Paul or waiting to actually talk to Paul, see whether we're going to stream or not tonight. But um, so the short, so I've, what I've been doing is, if, you know, I wake up, at, the dogs wake me up at four. I'm generally starting to wake up then anyway, because like the dogs, I wake up as it gets light, um, annoying me. And so I've usually been, you know, like, I'll feed the dogs, you know, take them out for a walk, whatever. Um, and usually I have half an hour or so between doing all of that and wanting to start work. And so I can knock out two or three shorts in 20 minutes um, and have them, I can film them, edit them, render them and upload them in that time. And so it was a nice little fill in. I didn't do them this morning, which is why on Thursday there were no shorts because I woke up with a howler of a headache um, so talking about headaches today thursday i went to the doctors um it was a different doctor that i'd never seen before we had a bit of a chat i was like i want to try some different treatments there's the treatments that i've been on you know haven't really been preventing them i'm going through a really bad spell so he's prescribed me some new medication that i've not tried before it's not particularly modern or advanced medication, but I've not tried it before, so I'm going to be trying that. Hopefully, it works. If it doesn't, then we'll, you know, the those of you that have suggested treatments to me, I really appreciate it. I this morning I was googling some of the new things that you guys have suggested. Migraine treatment seems to have moved on a lot in the last eight to ten years from when I was really suffering badly before and seeing the doctor a lot. Um, so if the new drugs don't work, then I'm planning to try and get a referral to a neurologist who has, who will be able to prescribe more modern, hopefully more effective drugs, um, that are all about stopping them happening. So that's going to be really cool. So generally lately, um, so I've, I've been having two types of headache. I've been having a wake up in the morning with quite a sharp pain in my head and I've been having later in the day a full blown migraine hitting and so I've been you know like yesterday I, I got to I think one o'clock um, had to stop work had to crash into a fence or a hedge and then I took a bunch of meds and fell asleep in the armchair downstairs for like three hours and woke up feeling somewhat better but not really um, I'm really lucky that um, where I work are really flexible and you know the so I I sort of manage a small team who are really self-sufficient um, there's another uh, guy who's kind of more senior than me but we, we split the kind of management stuff between a couple of us and he's being really good and my actual boss has been really good you know so yeah that really helps because that means that i have for all of this week i want to say all of last week but i may have gone into office for one day last week um i've been working at home because the problem is that again i think i've said this i i live 70 miles from work so if i get an attack at work I've got a long journey home to do or I've got to pay to stay. It's actually the next day now. I uh, I couldn't finish this commentary yesterday. It got so hot in the spare room um, that I didn't finish recording it. So we've got a little bit left to go. Um, 
So this, the first part was recorded on Thursday, it's now Friday. In between these, we did the stream on Thursday evening and I kind of cut that short quite abruptly because the heat really started to hit me and it's already warm in the spare room. And I've got a, a long day of work ahead, which is going to suck. So, yeah. Um. Anyway, we're going to take these up to the forage dealer get them sold see how much we made so i was making um the smaller trailer was selling for i think about 1800 pounds and the bigger trailer this one when it was nearly full was about three four something like that so made some decent money if i'd been paying attention i could have just looked from how much we've gained from when we started the harvest but i wasn't because i was busy rambling and i tend not to write that kind of thing down because reasons um, so yeah one more video on here uh, well kind of a mixed video between here and Glen Larvin and uh, we'll crack on with a new star in springtime so let's get these tipped don't be a huge amount of cash it's only 14,000 litres in here see how much this is going to be I sent the uh so to to grab that i sent the the harvester back on also drive up to the yard um so finances tab 16 grand that's not too bad for the for the beats pretty pleased with that anyway thanks for watching folks hope you enjoyed the video if you did click the like button i will see you again next time